Welcome to our video where we unravel one of history's most infamous assassinations, the murder of Julius Caesar. On the Ides of March, March 15, 44 BC, a group of Roman senators betrayed their leader in a brutal act. But why was Caesar assassinated, and what implications did this have on the Roman Republic? The scene unfolds in the Theater of Pompey, a key location in Rome where Caesar was attacked by his peers. Senators Cassius, Brutus, and others believed Caesar's power threatened the Republic's very existence. Under the guise of a Senate meeting, they surrounded Caesar and stabbed him 23 times. Ironically, this assassination intended to save the Republic accelerated its transformation into the Roman Empire. The phrase, et tu brut, encapsulates the betrayal by Brutus, a trusted friend and ally. This pivotal moment is a dramatic turn in history, highlighting the intense struggle for power. In this video, we will delve into the events leading up to this historic event and its aftermath. Julius Caesar was born on July 12, 100 BC, into the prestigious Julian clan. His family claimed descent from the goddess Venus, which instilled in him a sense of destiny. From his early years, his Caesar was deeply influenced by his ambitious mother, Aurelia. He grew up during the last decades of the Roman Republic, a period of significant political turmoil. Young Caesar witnessed the power struggles between the Optimates and the Populares. These factions fought for control, one representing the aristocracy, the other the common people. Caesar's uncle, Gaius Marius, was a key figure among the Populares. This connection initially exposed Caesar to the world of Roman politics and its dangers. His political ambitions were clear from an early age, leading him to pursue a career in public service. Despite early obstacles, including being captured by pirates, Caesar's resilience shone through. He demonstrated a shrewd understanding of Roman law and governance, setting the stage for his future power. Caesar's rise to power was marked by strategic alliances and political acumen. Early in his career, he formed an influential alliance with Pompey and Crassus, known as the First Triumvirate. This pact allowed Caesar to gain critical military command in Gaul, while Pompey controlled Spain and Crassus held sway over Rome. Caesar's marriage to Calpurnia also solidified his position within Roman aristocracy. He adeptly navigated political waters securing the support of the Roman populace through reforms and public projects. Caesar's enemies, however, were wary of his increasing influence and popularity. Despite numerous attempts to undermine him, Caesar's popularity and command over the Roman army grew. His ability to connect with the soldiers and his strategic prowess on the battlefield were undeniable. By 60 BC, he was elected consul, which elevated his status and expanded his political reach. This period was marked by both insightful political reform and relentless ambition, earning Caesar respect and fear. The Gallic Wars were perhaps the most critical phase in Caesar's military career. Spanning from 58 to 50 BC, these fierce campaigns expanded Roman territory significantly. Caesar's conquests began with the Helvidia, followed by decisive victories over other Gallic tribes. One of the most famous battles was the Siege of Alesia, where Caesar defeated the Gallic leader Vercingetorix. This victory secured Caesar's control over Gaul and demonstrated his tactical brilliance. Throughout the Gallic Wars, Caesar wrote Commentarii de Bello Gallico, documenting his military exploits. This work not only served as propaganda but provided crucial historical insights. With each victory, Caesar amassed wealth, loyalty from his troops, and a formidable reputation. His success in Gaul added to the Senate's growing unease, fearing his rise could lead to tyranny. The Gallic Wars were a turning point, cementing Caesar's legacy as one of Rome's greatest military leaders. Julius Caesar's expeditions to Britain in 55 and 54 BC were groundbreaking for Rome. Though fleeting, these invasions marked the first significant Roman engagements with the British Isles. Caesar sought to punish the Britons for aiding the Gauls and to gain prestige back in Rome. Despite initial setbacks, such as storms destroying his fleet, Caesar's resilience was evident. His first expedition met limited success, but it laid the groundwork for a more substantial second invasion. The following year, Caesar returned with a larger force, establishing a temporary presence in Britain. He managed to secure some alliances and tributes from local tribes. Although he did not leave a lasting Roman footprint in Britain, the expeditions were significant. 
They demonstrated Rome's reach and Caesar's ambitions, reinforcing his image as a visionary leader. Caesar's ventures in Britain showcased his relentless pursuit of glory and expansion despite the formidable challenges. These expeditions enriched his narrative of power, contributing to his legendary status in Roman history. Caesar's return to Rome marked the beginning of a crucial phase that would reshape the Roman Republic. After his successful campaigns in Gaul, Caesar crossed the Rubicon River in 49 BC, a bold move that defied the Senate's orders and declared war on Pompey and the Senate itself. This act of defiance was the catalyst for a civil war that would engulf the Roman world. With his legion's unwavering loyalty, Caesar's forces swiftly captured Italy, forcing Pompey to retreat to Greece. Pursuing his rival across the Adriatic, Caesar demonstrated strategic brilliance in decisive battles such as Pharsalus in 48 BC, where his adeptness in warfare and leadership shone. Pompey's defeat at Pharsalus was a turning point, effectively dismantling the Senate's resistance and solidifying Caesar's dominance. Yet, the civil war did not end with Pompey's death. Caesar still faced resistance from surviving factions in key provinces, such as North Africa and Spain. By 46 BC, Caesar had emerged victorious, addressing each challenge with tactical acumen and sheer determination. Upon his ultimate return to Rome, Caesar was hailed not just as a war hero, but a political maestro who had the vision to restore stability to a fractured republic. Once Caesar secured his position, he took on the title of dictator, but sought to rule with a blend of authority and reform. Rather than reign as a tyrant, Caesar embarked on a series of sweeping reforms aimed at strengthening Rome's infrastructure and governance. One of his significant reforms was the reorganization of the calendar, leading to the creation of the Julian calendar, which brought much needed consistency. He also moved to curb corruption, reducing the power of the Senate while redistributing land to veterans and the poor, aiming to address economic disparities. Caesar's legislative changes included expanding citizenship laws, thus integrating various regions into the broader Roman framework, fostering unity across the empire. By increasing the Senate's membership, he incorporated representatives from all across the realm, thus reflecting Rome's expanding influence and diversity. These reforms weren't just about structural change. Caesar's vision extended to renovating Rome itself with grand public projects that enhanced the city's prestige. Despite occasional resistance, Caesar's policies ushered in a transformative era that highlighted his dual focus on consolidation and growth. His approach was pragmatic yet visionary, laying the groundwork for a more unified and prosperous Rome. The Ides of March in 44 BC is a date etched in history, marking the dramatic climax of Julius Caesar's life. Despite his efforts to reform and stabilize Rome, Caesar's accumulating power sparked fear and jealousy among the Senate. A faction of 60 senators, led by Brutus and Cassius, conspired to end Caesar's rule through assassination. On the fateful day, Caesar arrived at the Senate, unaware of the deadly plot brewing against him. Surrounded by the conspirators, he was stabbed 23 times in a brutal and tragic attack. Caesar's last moments were legendary, with his alleged final words to Brutus, at two brute, symbolizing ultimate betrayal. His assassination ended his reign abruptly, but did not quell the turmoil. Instead, it plunged Rome into further chaos and subsequent wars. In his death, Caesar became a martyr, his legacy enduring beyond his mortal life. The power vacuum he left behind led to the rise of his great nephew Octavian, later known as Augustus, and the eventual transition from Republic to Empire. Julius Caesar's life and death continue to be a testament to the complexities of power, leadership, and legacy.